Today we're going to interview Professor Ken Ritchie here at Purdue University, Professor of Physics, and he does some pretty cool stuff. He works with biological E. coli organisms and takes a look at the surface of them and he uses lasers to check and see what happens to molecules on the surface of these little creatures. Hi, I'm Ken Ritchie and in our lab here we do biophysics, uh, specifically single molecule biophysics. Our goal here is to be able to understand how the molecules on the surface of a cell interact with the environment and how they transmit information from the outside to the inside of the cell. Uh, we use the instrument you see here, it's a uh, uh, microscope where we can look at things on the length scales that cells are uh, the size of cells. Uh, we have laser illumination so that we can see the single molecules. Uh, the specific type of, of microscope here is a total internal reflection fluorescence microscope. Uh, so this is the uh, microscope we use. Um, it has two lasers that illuminate the uh, sample. We have a green laser over here. We'll have a blue laser back there. Um, all of the uh, optics in the middle are in order to bring the two beams into the same sample plane so we can look at this at one image with two different colors. Um, sitting at this point is a dichroic beam splitter that can uh, mix the two colors so that we get the two uh, illumination uh, beams in the sample plane. Then we're using a fluorescence, uh, a fluorescent dye. So you illuminate it at one wavelength and it gives out uh, light at a different wavelength, at a different color. So that means uh, that using the two wavelengths coming in, we can look at two different colors at the same time. The image then goes down to another splitter that's inside the microscope that splits to two different cameras so we can look at two different colors at the same time. With this, we can look at interactions between molecules. So we can label one molecule red, leave another molecule green, and then be able to watch the red and green interact with each other in the, in the image. So part of what we're looking at in this uh, instrument here is um, cell surface receptors, cell molecules on the surface of E. coli. If this was an E. coli uh, cell, E. coli cells are about two microns long by about a micron wide. They look like little cigars. Um, what you get is that on the surface here, you'll have molecules that are walking all over the place, just going randomly and all over the place. And so what we want to do is look at how these are moving on the surface of the cell. One of them is a, uh, how a toxin would bind to the cell and then go into it in order to kill the E. coli cell. Another thing is that uh, many of the molecules are found only at the ends and not in the middle. And we're trying to figure out how these molecules get to the ends and how they stay there because they're essential for the cell to be able to find food be able to eat and be able to find direction when they're trying to swim along, along, the, uh, along the, the fluid they're in. So what we're using is total internal reflection and that can be demonstrated with this apparatus here. We have an incident beam coming in towards a uh, water air interface or a glass water interface and then we have a refracted beam on this side and what's hard to see over here is a reflected beam as well. It's coming down right here. The angle of the refracted beam is higher than the angle of the incident beam and this is the reason why you see a, a spoon in water looks like it's bending. Now if we change the angle of incidence though we can get to a point where the refracted beam now goes right along this interface between the water and the air. At that point you get all of the light reflected at this point and that's the condition known as total internal reflection. At that point you get a glow at the top of this air water or glass water interface that glow is what we're using to illuminate a cell that is at this interface. Shown here are the molecules I was talking about earlier that locate at the ends of the E. coli cell. You can tell this by the bright caps you see at the end of this cigar-shaped cell. These molecules are important for the cell being able to sense direction when it's swimming inside of a fluid. So in summary, what we're doing here is looking at individual molecules on the surfaces of live cells. And the reason this is useful is we can start to understand how the cells break down. If there's a uh, problem with the cell, something goes wrong, causes disease, uh, we can start looking at what the molecular basis is of this. And maybe we can start understanding how to fix it in the long run.
Well, my uh, 11th grade teacher, my 11th grade physics teacher, uh, really was a, a very interesting fellow, and he got me interested in, in physics directly. And he had taught me that physics was 10% uh, intelligence and 90% brute force. And I figured I could do that. The best part about research is seeing stuff that nobody's ever seen before, to actually be one of the first people to understand a process that's never been seen before, never understood before. And that happens quite often when you're doing research. 